Now you're known as the man for rotary engines. How did your career end up going down that path? Well, what happened is a friend of mine um, came, turned up to our house with a, with a prototype rotary from Norton, and he said, "Have a go on this." So I had a go on it, and I thought, "Bloody hell, this is fantastic! It'll make a fantastic race bike, this one." But and that, that, that engine then, at the time, that was for the police bike, the Interpol bike. It was bike, for the was police it? bike, yeah, police bike RAC and that sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, and it was a completely air cooled engine then as well. It wasn't water cooled either. Okay, so then you went to join to work for. Yeah, well, I said you'll have to get me a job there, you know. So they got me a job in the service department, and I was actually looking after the police demonstrators and that sort of thing. So obviously I had to go riding them around, and I just thought, what a fantastic uh, thing this is, you know, nice and smooth and everything. And um, I, I said to them, um, I'm sure I can get some more power out of this. And um, there was a crashed police bike that had been in the corner for a while. They kept bothering them. Can I, can I just use this? Oh, no, we can't. And then eventually they got fed up with me asking them. I said, look, it won't cost you anything. I'll do it my own time at night. So they let me have that engine and I did some mods to it. And we put it on a dyno one night. Bearing in mind, the engines are only really about 86 horsepower then. And uh, I said, I'm sure I can get 120 horsepower out of this. And we, we put it on the dyno one night, and, and to my amazement, it did exactly 120 horsepower. <laughs> I just thought, well, that's good. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's what started it all, really. And then I kept bothering him about, can I make a cut, the, the what's left of this police bike, can I just make a bit of a hack thing just to take to Myra? So I did, they let me do that in the end. We took it to Myra, and it did, uh, it did 170 miles an hour. You know, that would have been 85, I think. So it was quite fast for the 588cc engine. And then that then went, led on to the, the, the F1 road bike and the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, um, I said to him, look, you know, let me, um, let me, let's, let's make a complete a race bike, really. But they weren't, the management weren't really interested. So I sort of spat me dummy out, dummy out and I, um, I left them actually. I resigned from there, but, but i have been doing all that electronics work and all that side of it, and they basically asked me back, really. And I said, well, I'll come back, but with a proviso, you let me do a proper race bike. So that's what I did, really. So that's what happened. The red, silver, blue bike with the spond and chassis was the first bike, proper race bike we did, really. And then progressed into super bikes and, and yeah. the TT. What happened there, really, was that um, we, um, we needed some sponsorship. And we'd been, we, we, we was running a couple of riders on it, but we, um, what, uh, one of the riders couldn't ride the bike for, for uh, Power Bike International at Brands Hatch, which was the last meeting of the year. And uh, we, we was obviously trying to get sponsorship, and we, we'd actually asked some people from Imperial Tobacco, because there was some talk about JPS sponsoring something. So we, we invited them there, and Steve Spray um, went out and practiced. He'd never seen, the, he'd seen the bike, but he'd never rode it. He came in and, and uh, he pulled up and I said, what do you want me to do to it? And he just said, just put petrol in it. So I never made a single adjustment on it at all. And he went out and he won the two major races. And uh, the crowds went absolutely mad. And, and JPS people saw that, the Imperial Tobacco people. And um, we, got, we got a sponsorship for three years after that. And then you had then had the, the huge success. The program yeah, yeah. continued. Yeah. And then there's been a break. Um, why now back with the uh, Crichton? Uh, well, this is mainly, mainly down to Jilo, really. He was really enthusiastic about, because it, obviously all the things I've done in the past, um, I've obviously built this bike as well. Mm -hmm. And also, I've done 18 bikes, I think, altogether. And um, he said, let's just, let's, just, let's just make something, you know. And, uh, but because there was no parts left for Norton stuff, really, I had to, with a clean sheet of paper, do a new engine. Mm. And so, so a new engine was designed specifically for a race, really, not nothing to thinking about roads at all, really. And um, so a complete new bike, really. Although the chassis looks very similar to this one, it is quite, quite different in all our ways. Jilo, we're here to talk about Rotron and the motorbike, but we're surrounded by some technology that's far from motorbike based. What's the backstory for the company here? So um, back in about the year 2000, um, I was, uh, came across a, a tiny picture of a, of a guy with a fan strapped to his back and I thought, what on earth is that? Didn't quite make sense. It had a, just literally a man with an engine and a pedal on his back. And so I looked into it more and more and eventually came to the conclusion that you needed a paraglider wing and the whole thing was a personal aircraft called Paramature. So um, I got hold of one, learned how to fly it, had an amazing time flying this thing and thought this is something that 
everyone should experience, you know. This is the ultimate form of personal aviation. It's safe, it's low cost, it's wildly good fun. You can go on adventures and explore places with it. And so I set up a company called Parajet to manufacture personal aircraft. And through that kind of process of setting up the business, I, um, I wanted to kind of get the sport on the map. So met up with a, an adventurer called Bear Grylls and put the idea to fly over Everest to him. He got excited by the idea as well, and we made a TV program flying over Everest. That's this machine here. So uh, in 2007, we um, basically put two machines up to about, one bear got to about 30,000 feet, I got to 28,000 feet, um, flew over the top summit of Everest, and great TV program about all that. And off the back of that, we started getting interesting uh, con contacts from the MOD and, and other governments and agencies for high altitude engines. And through that, I met Brian, and making high altitude rotary engines was our, was our, became a big part of our business. So having gone from personal recreational aircraft, we started getting inquiries about high altitude engines. Met Brian to help us do that. And then having chatted with Brian, obviously look at his incredible background, his career, we thought, God, Brian, let's take some of this technology and put it into a new motorcycle. And Brian, obviously being passionate about racing motorbikes, motorbikes he obviously would jumped at the opportunity to develop a new race bike engine with us. So we took a lot of the learning that we'd, that we'd done with aircraft engines and helicopter engines and brought that into a new, brand new 21st century motorcycle engine, based originally on some of the learnings that Brian had had from back in the 1980s and 90s with Norton. So, you know, all the shortcomings of those engines we'd stripped out through aviation and, uh, and all the demands, the really high demands of, of an aviation engine and brought that into the motorcycle engine, which is a really exciting combination, actually. So what's the plan now then with the, the engine and the bike? What are we going to do with this project? So ultimately, it was about building 25 extremely high spec race bikes, all track day bikes. So they're not designed to be road legal originally at all. They're just purely for track, track days and not even to be raced specifically, maybe against each other, but not trying to comply with any regulations, just to build an extraordinarily high power, low weight, you know, wonderful handling race bike. That's what this project was all about. And to take that engineering uh, knowledge and that experience from all these last 12 years of developing engines for helicopters and unmanned systems into a race bike, which is what we've done. It's exactly what we've done. Look into the future after that 25, any potential plans? We've had a lot of interest for a road version of this bike. Uh, some, of these road, some of these race bikes at the customer's request will be put through an SVA test, so they can be made road legal. Um, we're doing a small proportion of those 25 will be made road legal. And that may well, depending on how, you know, we, we, we're no rush to do this. So we want to, we're really excited about building these 25 bikes and getting them out there on the racetrack, making some wonderful films of doing all the things they do. And really this is a, this is a project driven by a real love of making, you know, beautiful engineering components and seeing the, what, you know, what you've got to imagine is you bring raw metal into this building, lumps of, of, of billets of aluminium and steel, and you turn them into, with our machines and design and the rest of it, a machine that can spin around and produce 220 horsepower from the smallest, most powerful engine currently available to, well, in the industry. And, and, and we do that all here, and that's, that's something that really excites us.